G'day viewers, welcome to this week's PB's Retro Restorations. This week I'm doing this Matchbox Super Kings Plymouth Grand Fury New York City Police Car. It belongs to my friend and supporter of the channel Nathan. Thank you very much Nathan. Now I'm restoring this one for him, he's going to get it back because this was one of his favourites. Uh, it was a gift his parents received before he was even born I believe is the story. So as you can see it's missing the flashes off the roof. The aerial's long since gone, as is most of the chrome on the plated parts. So I'm going to have to try and... Uh, replating the chrome's not so bad, but I'm going to have to hand make... come up with something for the flashes and the aerial, but I'm sure we can handle it. Now when this was issued originally, it came with two little plastic figures of New York City's finest, ready to take down the crooks. I've got to say I'm insanely jealous of this car. I would like to get one of these for my own collection one day. Always wanted one when I was a kid, but anyway. I can live vicariously through you, Nathan, and <laughs> pretend for a minute. Hopefully we can get it looking good. So I get it off and look. Look, oh, it's carpet again. I'm never going to get enough hair to make a new wig at this rate, but anyway. I'll put it in the bag. So, interior is one big slab. The front pieces aren't broken. Now, have a look how out of scale the steering wheel on this is. It's like tiny. Now, <laughs> it's kind of, if you were customizing it, you'd make it a bit more close to size. Now, I thought long and hard about pulling the boot lid and the doors out of this. Um, and I had a little bit of a go at that bar that runs over the top, but it proved to be a bit harder than I would like it to be. So I thought, no, I'll leave them in situ. Um, it looks like it was painted from the factory with all those parts already installed, so I guess we don't have to worry about an authentic finish. Um, I'll take out the window. Now the wheels come out easy on these, it's great, uh, but I could not get the spring plate to Budge. I cleaned it up though, but I had to leave it on there. Now, something I learnt with the Cannonball Run Dodge van is that these mags just pop out. Pop. Pop. Um, which makes for easy stripping and painting and re -chroming. So here's all our parts laid out, ready for refurbishment and clean up where required. Popping all the plastic chrome plated bits into my brake fluid tub just to strip what's left of that chrome off to facilitate restoration. And here's the Dremel bit. Now, uh, thank you everyone for your lovely comments, Adam, Jeff, and, and the others. You know who you are. Um, you said lots of nice things about my Dremel sound effects. Now I feel I put an inordinate amount of pressure on myself to do it every week. So, uh, at the risk of alienating my fans, um, Oh, I'm going to do it anyway. That's it. I can't do it. I'm not going to do it the whole clip. Oh, hang on. The clip's over. No, it's not. Sounds like part Dremel, part giant mechanical bee or something anyway. Okay, I'm removing those plated parts out of my little tub and I'm gonna get the toothpick and the toothbrush and give them a good scrub and get them clean ready for refurbishment. get some double-sided tape which is stating the obvious really well it's not double-sided tape it's masking tape I've wrapped around on itself it's DIY double-sided tape I'm gonna stick all the little plastic mags on just to hold them on while I airbrush them and we'll get them all chromed up again so here I've already applied the black base coat and now I'm applying the Molotov spray over the top 
That was the sound of my compressor building back up to pressure. It's a new sound effect I've invented this week. You're welcome. And I don't want to brag, but that looks pretty good. Works awesome, that stuff. I love it. Now, replacement decals. I basically took photos of the car, put them on my computer, and just using Paint 3D again, I've gone in and mended where there were gaps and fixed the damage so I can print out a new set of my own. Now, following on from the experiment with the Bristol car and kind of painting it in negative if you will, I sprayed the car white first, then I masked off where the stripes, the image of the shield and the hood and boot decals uh, so that when I lay the clear decals over the top they'll still show up. And I had some pretty good success, uh, the boot decal was a little bit off but otherwise it was quite, quite a good result in the end. Apart from the fact, of course, you eagle-eyed viewers will notice that I forgot to mask off the white square for the roof, so after it was all dried and everything, I had to mask that off and spray paint again, but that's okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll work it out one day. Okay, so here you can see the results. We've taken the masking tape off and it's left all the white places where the stripes and where the decals are going to go. I still haven't painted the roof in this shop and for once it didn't bleed on me and it came out really good the first time uh, so I was really happy with that here's my home printed decals just on a standard bubble jet printer uh, with a clear coat over the top and then they're ready to use now I've got them as you'll see what I mean by the boot lid decal I left a few lines in it which is more due to the quality of my printer than anything um, but it came out good I'm pleased with it Now I regret to say that this is the only bit of footage I have of me making the light bar on top. I don't know what happened to the rest of it. Um, you'll just have to believe me when you see it at the end. So here's all our refurbished parts. You can see that light bar has been added in now. And an aerial. I raided all those parts from my uh, model kit stuff and just cut them and made them fit. Mag wheels pop back in. Reassembly is pretty straightforward once you work out how it goes back in together and pull it apart a couple of times.
So tightening up the last screw, shut those doors and we are done. Alright, so here we are back at the start with our well-loved but still pretty intact Plymouth Fury or Grand Fury as it says on the bottom of the mug guards. Um, most of the chrome missing, the light bar long gone, the aerials gone. You know what we're dealing with, you saw it at the start. And here is what we're left with now. Looking a million bucks with its fresh paint, fresh decals, new chrome, new light bar, new aerial, and some sick mags that I don't think any New York City police car had in the 70s, but it doesn't matter. It looks pimping. Now, the stripe is a little bit crooked. That's probably the one thing I'm not real happy with, but overall I'm really stoked with this one. I think it came out great. So I hope you like it, Nathan. I know it's already got a brighter place on your shelf at home. Um, but I really enjoyed working on this one. It was great. Now I'd like to thank everybody for the support and kind words and comments and feedback I've been receiving in the last week or two. Well, since I started really, but just lately, um, I've really appreciated everybody. It really does mean the world to me and it does give me the energy to keep doing it. Um, so thank you very much. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. Don't forget these dibs build-offs. We'd love for you all to get involved. Uh, they're going to be a lot of fun. If you've enjoyed watching this video, why not consider subscribing? Uh, click on my bald head there and be whisked away to a land of poor sound effects, some half-decent restos, and maybe you'll get a laugh as well. Click on the bell for alerts. I will see you next week. Thank you for joining us. See you later.